Okay, everyone. I have the time as being exactly 5.30. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mrs. Gould, I'm here. Mr. Thompson? Present. Mr. Cabrera? Here. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, the notice requirements have been satisfied as to the time, place, and date of holding said meeting by posting notice on the bulletin board here in Borough Hall and by mailing and emailing same to the Herald of Cape May Cape County, the Gazette Leader, and the Press of Atlantic City on October 23rd, 2019. Those of us who are here in the uh, in the meeting room, way in and out in the event of emergency, is your back right or your front left, our front right. A uh, couple quick announcements uh, for this meeting. Uh, this meeting is being shown live on YouTube and also Facebook. And there's also the ability to call in using the dial-in conference line. That phone number is 234-203. 2766. You're going to enter a participant ID number 786 394 836, followed by the pound sign. Again, that number is 234 203 2766. Enter a participant ID 786 394 836, followed by the pound sign. Okay, um, I believe the first order of business that we have today are uh, some ordinances, two on second reading and one for a first reading. Madam Clerk, may we have the ordinances? Yes, sir. The first is ordinance number 1327 for chapter 63 sidewalks. I move that ordinance number 1327 be placed on second reading and final passage by title only. Second. It has been moved and seconded that ordinance number 1327 be placed on second and final reading by title only. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Ordinance 1327 reads as follows. An ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 63, Sidewalks, Curbs, and Alleyways of the Code of the Borough of Wildwood Crest to require use of pervious materials between the curb and the outbound edge of the sidewalk. I move that a public hearing now be held in Ordinance Number 1327. Second. It has been moved and seconded that a public hearing on Ordinance Number 1327 now be held. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. The floor is open for any public comments. Those of you who are on the conference line, do you have any questions? Hearing none, any on YouTube or Facebook? Hearing none? Here's a good insight. Hearing none, I move that the public hearing on Ordinance 1327 now be closed. Second. It has been moved and seconded that Ordinance Number 1327 be passed. I'm sorry, you said be closed, right? Yes. yes. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that the public hearing on Ordinance Number 1327 now be closed. Roll call, Mrs. Gould. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Cabrera. Yes. I move Ordinance 1327 to be passed on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. It has been moved and seconded that Ordinance Number 1327 be passed on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Next is Ordinance 1328 regarding Chapter 75, trailers and temporary dwellings, etc. I move that Ordinance 1328 be placed on second reading and final passage by title only. Second. It has been moved and seconded that Ordinance Number 1328 be placed on second and final reading by title only. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Ordinance 1328 reads as follows. An ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 75, trailers, temporary dwellings, and structures, both storage to permit storage of certain recreational vehicles on private property. I move that a public hearing now be held on Ordinance Number 1328. Second. It has been moved and seconded that a public hearing on Ordinance Number 1328 now be held. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Floor is open. 
Is there anybody on the conference line that has any questions or comments on ordinance number 1328? Hearing none, we'll move to the YouTube streaming and Facebook. A 15 second delay. 14, 13, 12. Nobody? Hearing no, I move that the public hearing on 1328 now be closed. Second. We moved and seconded that the public hearing on Orders Number 1328 now be closed. Roll call, Mrs. Gould. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Cabrera. Yes. I move that Ordinance 1328 be passed on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. We moved and seconded that Orders Number 1328 be passed on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Roll call, Mrs. Gould. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Cabrera. Yes. Next is Ordinance 1329, and it reads as follows. An ordinance amending and restating Chapter 47A, Parks, of the Code of the Borough of Wildwood Crest, <coughs> establishing certain restrictions on the use of kayak launch facility. I move that Ordinance 1329 be passed on first reading, advertised according to law, be brought up for second and final reading and public hearing on July 1, 2020 at 9.30 a.m. Second. It has been moved and seconded that orders number 1329 be passed on first reading, advertised according to law, be brought up for second and final reading and public hearing on July 1st, 2020 at 9.30 a.m. Roll call, Mrs. Gould. Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Okay. Leads us to the resolutions. The first is authorizing an award of contract for a community development consultant for existing 2019 and 2020 projects. So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the Ford Wine resolution be adopted. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Next is authorizing refund of property taxes or utilities overpayment in the amount of $531.11 for property located at 105 East Fern Road and made payable to CoreLogic. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Ford Wine resolution be adopted. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Mm -hmm. Next is authorizing refund of property taxes or utilities overpayment in the amount of $1,417.13 for property located at 149B West Buttercup Road, made payable to Shore Title. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the foregoing resolution be adopted. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Next is authorizing refund of Peer Playmates camp fees, which total $69,605 for 2020. Unfortunately, so moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the foregoing resolution be adopted. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Next is supporting the Blue Movement mission and vision of Love Blue to bring attention to the effect of pollution in our oceans and on our beaches. So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the foregoing resolution be adopted. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Next is authorizing application refund of mercantile license and tourism fees to John and Dawn M. Schaefer. So moved. Second. The move and seconded that the foregoing resolution be adopted. Roll call, Mrs. Gould. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Cabrera. Yes. Next is authorizing a word of contract for specialized services to provide notice, call center, and credit monitoring services with Epic. So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the foregoing resolution be adopted. Roll call, Mrs. Gould. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Cabrera. Yes. Next is authorizing contracts with certain approved state and national contract vendors for calendar year 2020. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the foregoing resolution be adopted. Roll call. Mrs. Gould. Yes. And Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Cabrera. Yes. Next is authorizing a contract award for an amateur sand sculpting contest. So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the foregoing resolution be adopted. Roll call. Mrs. Gould. Yes. And Mr. Thompson. Yes. And Mr. Cabrera. Yes. Next is authorizing the Outdoor Explorers Program for summer 2020. So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the foregoing resolution be adopted. Roll call. Mrs. Gould. Yes. And Mr. Thompson. Yes. And Mr. Cabrera. Yes. Next is authorizing refund of Beach Box rental fee to Doug and Jessica Reiner in the amount of $400. So moved. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded that the foregoing resolution be adopted. Roll call. Mrs. Goulds? Yes. And Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Next is authorizing the appointments of four Class 1 police officers. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the foregoing resolution be adopted. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. And Mr. Thompson? Yes. And Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Lastly is authorizing application refund of a special event fee for a wedding to Kevin Gall. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the foregoing resolution be adopted. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. And Mr. Thompson? Yes. And Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Did he get cold feet? I'm sorry? No, he probably didn't have a place to do it. Men don't get cold feet. <laughs> I move all bills probably authorized be paid. Second. It's been moved and seconded that all bills properly authorized be paid. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. I move that all reports received from the court administrator, the chief financial officer, the tax collector, the captain of police, Supervisor for the Recreation Department, Emergency Services Coordinator for the EMS and the Wild Crest Volunteer Company Chief for the month ending May 31, 2020, be accepted as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that all reports received from the Court Administrator, Chief Financial Officer, Tax Collector, Captain of Police, Supervisor for the Recreation Department, Emergency Services Coordinator for the EMS and the Wild Crest Volunteer Fire Company Chief for the month ending May 31st, 2020, be accepted as presented. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. I move that all minutes from the regularly scheduled commission meetings dated May 20th, 2020 and June 3rd, 2020, be approved as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that all minutes from the regularly scheduled commission meetings dated May 20th, 2020 and June 3rd, 2020, be approved as presented. Roll call. Mrs. Gould? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Cabrera? Yes. Okay. That brings us to our administrator's report. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Uh, beach signage. Seashore Signs has reported that park signs were delivered to Public Works yesterday morning. Our street beach signs for south of Rambler will be delivered to Public Works before the end of this week, while the large beach signs that talk about our beach rules um, are scheduled to be shipped next week, so we should have them on the beach um, in time for 4th of July, I would anticipate. Uh, beach boxes. I was notified via email on April 16th that due to the COVID crisis, DEPCOR had to shut down the production of our beach boxes that we had ordered. At this point, the Department of Corrections Construction Department had delivered 50 double beach box units with four more to be completed by a supervisor for a total of 54 of the 100 double units that DEPCOR could provide to us for this 2020 season. Um, knowing that, I immediately worked on an alternate means of constructing the needed beach boxes for the 2020 season that we had already rented. After consulting with the governing body, we entered into an agreement with the local carpenters union to provide the borough with the labor necessary and asked that our purchasing department handle the ordering of materials. We began having two union members on site and after monitoring their progress, it was determined it would be necessary to bring on two additional carpenters. That would make us um, able to have all of the beach boxes completed on time. I'm happy to report that the 46 remaining boxes were completed slightly ahead of schedule, and thanks to our Public Works Department and the Recreation Department, were placed on the beach to allow occupancy by June 6. The boxes produced in-house were made with upgraded materials, including, but not limited to, AZAC and better shingles, hinges and hasps, and came in at an average cost, including labor, of $1,413. DEPCOR provided their boxes at a cost of $1,315, including delivery costs to Cressy Avenue. The increase uh, per box using the Carpenters Union was about $263. However, as I stated, they were made with better quality materials, and we did get them ahead of schedule, so I'm happy to report that. Uh, COVID-19 closings and cancellations. As of today, the county has reported a total of 47 active community cases in Cape May County right now, with one active case in Wild Crest. Just today, a large chunk of people were taken off the active list and into the county's off-quarantine list. So that's some good news, along with the generally lower case count that we're seeing. Most borough buildings are now open to the public during normal business hours, and all services provided to the public have continued uninterrupted. We have established COVID-19 protocols for sanitation 
and mandate the wearing of masks and proper social distancing to keep our employees and our visitors safe while they're in our buildings. Crest Pier and the pool are currently closed to the public and all recreation events and venues remain closed at this time. We are awaiting word from the governor's office on the opening of indoor municipal pools in the future. In the meantime, we are taking advantage of the time that it is closed to make necessary ADA bathroom improvements to the pool. Due to restrictions on the number of attendees at events, it will not be possible to hold many of our summer concerts until after the 8th of July. The canceled shows include performances by Parrot Beach on Saturday, June 27th, Fuse Box on, the on July 1st, Don't Call Me Francis on Saturday, July 4th, and the Mys Mystical Majesty Band on Wednesday, July 8th. Executive Order 152 currently limits outdoor gatherings to no more than 100 people. The governor has indicated that these limits may be raised to 250 people on June 22nd and 500 people on June 3rd. Those limits are not high enough for the Wildwood Crest Summer Music Concert Series to function. However, as the performances regularly draw crowds of more than 500 people on Wednesday evenings and more than 1,000 on Saturday evenings. Um, according to the Recreation Department, the Crest Music Series is now tentatively scheduled to begin on July 11th at 7.30 in Centennial Park with a performance by the Deck Band. That's only if the governor increases his limits on outdoor gatherings. Subsequent shows are scheduled for each Wednesday through September 2nd and each Saturday through September 19th at Centennial Park, which is located at Fernand Ocean. Sadly, we had to cancel our Crest Playmates summer program. The Recreation Department, as you know, will be holding an alternate summer program that can conform to the governor's current executive orders. Just a reminder that our beaches, parks, and bike paths are open with social distancing required and masks are always encouraged while in close proximity to others. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Governor Body, any questions for Connie? Nope. Okay, thank you, Connie. Uh, moving on to the engineer's report. Okay, thank you. Uh, we do not have any significant updates on the grants, but we do on their capital improvement projects, and there is a significant amount. So the first one, the Pacific Avenue Barry Street improvement project is continuing, and the contractor will demobilize June 30th and return in the fall of this year. The contractor will need from the fall of this year into the spring of next year to finish that contract. The contractor is currently working on the utility improvements on Pacific Avenue and concrete work on St. Louis Avenue. Target Road and Miami Avenue are scheduled for final surface course paid in the week of June 30th. And lastly, the Crest Memorial School parking lot improvements are scheduled to start next week and run for about three to four weeks. The 2019 roadway improvement program is completed except for punch list items. At the request of the borough, we are in the process of preparing a change order this contract for site work associated with the Sunrise Park improvements. We are targeting submitting that change order uh, for the next meeting. And for review and approval by the commissioners, and construction for that project is now looking to be scheduled for fall of this year, should you approve that change order. Uh, next item, the ADA bathroom improvement project that Connie mentioned at the uh, Joseph on Savage Pool is scheduled to start this week. In fact, I believe it's starting tomorrow and proceed for the next month, so we're hoping to get in there and make all those improvements before the pool is open, and hopefully the pool will be open. And lastly, the survey for the reconstruction of Stanton Road is complete, and we are in the design phase for that street. The survey for the reconstruction of Beach Avenue is scheduled for next week, and we'll move into design right after that. That's my report. Okay, thank you, sir. Governing body, any questions for Mr. de Blasio? No, thank you, sir. Okay. All right, so before we move on, I just want a couple following up on some of the COVID and last-minute updates. Um, Connie talked about the uh, outdoor explorer camp. I want to thank the Recreation Department for putting that outdoor program together. I think uh, a lot of people will be very happy in light of the fact we had to cancel, unfortunately, the, uh, the Pure Playmates. Uh, as Connie indicated, uh, outdoor pools can open on June 22nd. Uh, following up on Mr. de Blasio, uh, so the Sunrise Park project, uh, the one with the play structure and the fitness equipment and so forth, uh, we were working very hard to try to have that started here in the beginning or the end of June, having it completed by the middle of July, it's not going to happen, so I just want to make sure that the public is aware that that project will uh, be on hold and will commence sometime in September. And uh, the side streets off of the Pacific Avenue project, 
will go on until the end of September. I'm sorry, the end of June. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, we want to get that part of it done and make the roadways safe, uh, so that the busier part of summer, July and August, uh, folks don't have to worry about um, the construction and, and potential uh, safety issues. Uh, talk to recreation department. The, the, the beach ambassador program will start July the first. Uh, that program, just to remind everybody, we'll, we'll talk a lot about social distancing. We'll talk a lot about where you can smoke on the beaches. Uh, we'll help enforce potential, you know, dogs on the beach. We'll talk about recreation and tourism events in the borough and anything else that the beach patrol and the police department may need assistance on uh, throughout the uh, the course of the summer. Um, the, the last meeting we authorized a, a uh, or actually at the last TDC meeting, the TDC authorized uh, a promotional um, uh, marketing campaign via social media, via uh, website and so forth um, to help all of the Wildcrest businesses uh, be promoted and drive business to the website. Uh, and bring more attention to support the efforts of, uh, of, in addition to the efforts of the Tourism Authority, um, they had approved that expenditure of $10,000 to help promote Wild Crest and, and their businesses. Uh, the Public Works Department announced today that the borough-wide yard sale will be October 3rd. We are getting a lot of comments and questions on that, so it's going to be moved to October, October the 3rd. Uh, Hopefully at the next meeting in July, um, there is a request to waive the fees. It won't be as fancy per se as the original one that we do in the spring, in, uh, right before Mother's Day, Mother's Day weekend, but we will offer that opportunity at the request of many of our residents uh, asking our clerk's office for that. Uh, earlier in the meeting, we, we passed a resolution for Love Blue. We had talked about them, uh, had them on the conference call uh, about a month ago. You will see uh, the same folks, young men and women that were part of the beach patrol um, picking up trash out on the beach and, and pre pre you know, offering more of an awareness to, to our waterways and the cleanliness of our beaches. So if you see you know, some of that information going on out on the beach and through our ambassador program, that's what that's all about. We're getting bombarded with a lot of complaints about the sand and the street ends and, and the walkways. The wind has been absolutely <laughs> crazy here in June. So you bear, should be there and you should it. stop that sand because you're I, the mayor I and that's know. your job. I, I want to make sure I have a chance because I get emails and calls and my fingers are falling off. So I just want to let everyone know we're working on it. We hear you. We will get it squared away. We just need the wind to cooperate and, and, and die down. Uh, outdoor concerts, as Connie indicated, the next four uh, have been canceled, which we're still going to start June 27th, uh, but they are, looks like July 11th will be the first one. The last thing I have is, is uh, we are now permitted, Madam Clerk, right, to be able to offer our meetings to in-person meetings now, uh, subject to capacity, capacity of the room, which the room, which is, what was there, is 95. 24 people. 24, 24 people now from the public can come in. Uh, first 24. First 24. We, had, we are counted in that 24. We're 14. We are counted in that 24. So, uh, right. so the question that, that I think that our clerk was trying to get is where do we want to go from here? If we're limited in capacity as it stands right now, do we want to continue to offer live streaming, Facebook, and the conference line? Uh, we just need to know that so for future planning, so for Mr. Armour, who's providing this great equipment and the opportunity to live stream. I know I, I had commented back, I, I, I think it's good to offer the live streaming so folks can see what happens here at these meetings. I know you probably don't have anything better to do than watch our meetings, but you're more than welcome to, and we'd love to have you here. I hope you all at home are eating popcorn and listening in on the call, but I think that we'd like to stop the Facebook. We can certainly stream it, but we're, we're getting some crazy questions on on the Facebook Live, I think we should, you know, back off the comments on that. But certainly allow the opportunity here in person via conference call and live streaming. I'll open up that conversation for any, because I think we, right, Trish, you need to know before the Thank July you. 1st meeting. Governing body, you have any comments and questions on that particular topic? I think we still have to at least do the live streaming while the um, restrictions are in place. Well, the restrictions are going to be in place for like a long, long time. So it really depends. There's a cost fag figure, a cost factor in this. Um, 
Well, we don't get that many people that even call. So they're certainly, they're going to call rather than come. That I know. It, it's up to the two of you. I'm right in the middle. It doesn't really make any difference to me one way or the other. I think we could monitor it and see how it goes. I mean, if the call volume's going down because it was up in the beginning, then certainly we can revisit it. Okay. So why don't we just take it month by month and, and, and see where we go. But I think for right now, safe to say, if, if you July all agree. July 1 is the next meeting. July 1 is the next meeting, and, and we'll just keep continue to do the live streaming, continue to do the Facebook Live. But I think we, I think we need to just present any questions you know, through the through the live stream and or they can be directed to the clerk. Sure. Clerk at wildcrest.org and then we can get any questions answered in that regard. But I think the conference call, yeah, we can certainly offer that to all. I'm not I think I only heard a few on the call here today. Okay, so Madam Clerk, you have your direction on on that. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, Commissioner Thompson had asked you to do a report on the primary election. Would you mind reviewing uh, what's going on with the primary election? I have no problem if you'd like me to read it. Feel free. Okay, so the primary election is set for July the 7th, and pursuant to the Governor's Executive Order 144, all elections that take place on July 7th shall be conducted primarily via vote-by-mail ballot. Any voter who appears at a polling place on the day of the election shall vote via a provisional ballot except a voter with disabilities may vote on an ADA accessible voting machine, but the poll worker must call the Board of Elections and get permission in order to do so. It is not up for everybody to vote in a machine. They must vote provisional if they do not mail in their ballot. Another thing is that um, voted mail-in ballots may not be returned to our polling place. The county has designated five uh, polling places, drop boxes, and as soon as we know those uh, locations, we will advise everyone. Every vote by mail ballot that is postmarked by July the 7th, 2020, and is received by July 14th, 2020, shall be considered valid. And then if you do show up at a polling place, hand sanitizer will be provided, as well as pens that you can take home if you are voting provisionally. Okay. So you get a fan do you get a fancy pen? Just Whatever the Board of Elections will send over. <laughs> that's that's probably a no. not fancy. Probably not fancy. Okay. Well, it's safe to say that it would probably be smart to um, do your vote by mail to avoid the lines, the confusion, and any hassle that it may cause at the polling place, um, as well as the social distancing or the waiting in line. So I, I would recommend you do your, your ballots by mail. Uh, and like Trish said, when we, um, we find out where they should be uh, sent, we will let you know. They were doing the date of the five locations all over the county had to be certified by the 15th. We're just waiting on word where those locations are. Okay, and I, I think uh, we're getting some questions. The, the ballots uh, have not come in yet. The last batch I called over to the county board um, of the uh, Rita Fulgenetti's office at the clerk's office, and she said the last batch got mailed out on Monday. Okay. So you should be receiving them anytime. Okay. If you don't have it by the 22nd, you do need to call over to the county clerk's office. I think that you should explain what a primary is because there are people, one particular here, that said to me, I don't want to vote for this person. And I said, this is a primary. You have to vote if you're doing a party. Your you're party. either a Democrat or you're Republican or you're whatever else you want to be. But this isn't the presidential it is election. It's 100% not. <clears throat> this is for your party. So this is, you know, this is the way, so therefore some of these people won't even vote. No, which and is, if you're not affiliated, a, they will send you an application for vote by mail, but you have to declare it. Okay, any more questions regarding the primary? Okay. Thank uh, you, Mr. Thompson. Thank you. It was a pleasure <laughs> to watch you do that. <laughs> All right, can we have our financial report? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure you're awake. All right, that brings us to our first round of public comments. Anyone on the call have any questions or comments, please give your name and address for the record, please. Dennis Tarasio, 112 East Louisville Avenue. Gotcha, Dennis, go ahead. Resolutions. Can you explain resolution 1, 7, and 8? 1. 
seven and eight. Okay. Uh, resolution number one uh, is uh, it, I'm not sure, that's the appointment for Mark Lauer. So he is our uh, the borough's grant writer for various uh, DCA projects. So I believe this is uh, to get him on the on the calendar year so that his term expires at the end of the year. That's resolution number one. Resolution. Do we retain him, or do we pay him by grant, or how is he? He gets he gets he gets a percentage of the grant. There's a there's a contract between him and the borough, and he only gets paid when grants have been received. He gets a flat fee too. Flat a flat fee and also a percentage of the grant. This six month fee is nine hundred dollars flat. Yeah, it's nine nine hundred dollars for six months. Okay. Okay. Uh, number uh, seven is as a, is the, uh, the the dealing with the uh, the, the cyber uh, security issues that the borough is uh, still all and almost have it wrapped up. This is to engage uh, those individuals that may have been affected. This is the company that will actually do the noticing to any affected parties. I will say um, uh, unofficially that the number of of potential issues is much, 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 much less than what was originally anticipated, but so this company would be the one to provide the notice for anyone that has been affected, which we're still working to, to figure out the final number and, and who uh, at this point in time. That's question number seven. And, and that was all brought on because of employees working from home on their computers? No, 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 malware. No, malware. Okay, because I, I can remember it, like the first meeting that this was brought up, you told me it was because of the employees working at home. Yeah, so it originally when we first, so you're, you're asking a, a non-technical person based on information provided, what we think may have caused it, may be in the operative word. So as you bring in the experts, that, can, that determined to be not the case, and it was much, uh, has, it has to do with malware. At the time, that was stated as a yeah. possibility. Yeah, it was stated as a possibility, but, you know, I was just trying to give you information because you asked the question, so I gave you the untechnical answer, but now that we have the technical answer, the answer is malware. Okay. All right. Number eight, authorizing contracts for certain approved state and national contract vendors for the calendar year 2020. Uh, so that is just a, a, uh, a state contract. Um, having folks... Uh, um, authorized by the borough for this borough to do business with for any purchases and services that they may need to offer. Okay, and with seven, is the um, the GIF picking up the cost of that? No, the insurance company, AXA. Yeah, yeah the insurance company picks it up. Yes, yeah, so the insurance company for the borough picks it up. The, the joint um, no. No. GIF, right? The joint no. insurance fund has a an, an insurance company that provides insurance for this purpose for this purpose. So yes, it's through the GIF, but it's actually an insurance company, AXA Insurance, who actually approves these these um, vendors and pays them directly. Our self-insured retention is twenty five thousand dollars, but AXA will pay these vendors, and AXA is hired by the GIF. And they were already approved. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anybody else on the call have any more comments or questions? Is there anybody else on the call other than Mr. Travasio? The reason I'm asking that question, I'm trying to determine if we need to offer the conference line services going forward for the meetings in the future. Okay. Dennis, congratulations. Sounds like you're the only one. So we're going to move on to uh, the YouTube Person next week. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks. <clears throat> Nothing on YouTube. Is there anything on Facebook? Uh, we have a we have a few. Um, <clears throat> no, number one, is, first is just a comment. Uh, Vicki Dolan, sixty four hundred Atlantic Avenue. She feels that Facebook is the best way to follow these meetings uh, uh, from from outside here remotely. She said very easy to follow. Uh, that was just a comment. Um, and there's a couple of related questions, so I'll, I'll ask them together. Uh, Regina Bain from 200 West Pittsburgh, 
She asks, why are the beaches in Wildwood Crest not smooth and flat this year? <laughs> um, and Tracy Dunham from two, uh, 211 East Newark, uh, she has a disabled daughter, and she wants to know if the beach ramps can be extended on the beach uh, further, uh, you know, the beach walkways. And she also made a comment about a lot of uh, ruts and undulations in the sand this year. Okay. So with making it hard to walk down to the beach with a handicap chair. Okay. So with respect to the the, the, the beaches and uh, being n not flat, I'll call it. Um, again, that has to do with this with the uh, with the winds. Uh, that basically those ruts are being the, the sand is going back to the back beaches into the streets and the street ends. However, that said, when the weather gets nicer and we can actually do the necessary work. That will all be smoothed out. It just, it's, as soon as we rake it, it comes right back. So, again, as I mentioned, bear with us. Uh, Public Works is, is well aware of what needs to be done there. With respect to the beach walkways, um, as, a, as a result, so one of the things that makes those ruts worse are those beach walkways. And that's why they're not extended at this point, because the further you take them down, the further the ruts and so forth happen. So, we know that in the early part of the summer, while the winds are the way they are, that they, when they shift and, and they move, blow the sand the way that they do, it creates issues. So we're trying to, on a limited staff, um, you know, we, we have a very limited staff. Uh, seasonal staff is you know, having a hard time getting folks to work, just like everybody else. But we're trying to do it the best that we can and limit the amount of ongoing maintenance that we need to have. When the time comes and we get caught up with work, Public Works will, be main, will have other... Uh, extensions made and we will add some extensions but not to the point where it gets to the point where water could come up and wash them away because that has happened in the past and we're not trying to wastefully uh, spend the money. Uh, the reason we didn't extend them over the last couple of years is because of the dune project for the Army Corps. We, we were waiting to see how much uh, space and what that construction would be before we made that made that decision. So. Uh, that is the explanation on the um, on the walkways. <clears throat> Anything else, Mr. Kniff? That is it, sir. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to new business. Uh, we have under here our street opening uh, ordinance uh, slash the Wildwood Water Utility. So what this is about? So the borough has a rather uh, detailed street opening ordinance. Uh, excluded from that ordinance is the Wildwood Water Utility. Um, because of the number of openings that they need to make and because they are our neighboring uh, community. However, that said, we are getting a lot of concern from our residents and from our staff that these openings um, are not being done pursuant to our ordinance. Um, we noticed uh, the Wildwood Water Utility. Uh, I've received confirmation today that uh, they have planned to go out to bid and address all of these uh, openings that are not done to our ordinance after the summer. So if you see areas that look splotchy and, and, and not right, it's probably a utility uh, opening and closing using coal patch. Bear with us. The utility company has heard our plea to come in and make it better. They will. It will just happen after the summer. So I don't, my point is, I don't believe we need to do anything with, with the ordinance at this particular point in time. However, I think we, if uh, we just keep it in the radar, perhaps under old business, we'll monitor it, and then eventually we'll, we'll pull it off. Okay. Under old business, uh, the sanitary sewer ordinance, so I'm going to take everybody back to a couple meetings ago uh, where Mr. de Blasio put a very nice and detailed ordinance together that specifies the specifications and the ownership of the line which we call the lateral to the sewer main and how it connects to the house and whose responsibility is that. Um, so he has that ordinance in place. Now that we have a, uh, uh, our full-time construction official who will be you know, being able to, to monitor this and also serve as the, the point of contact for all um, for all the, uh, the connections in conjunction with our engineer, we need to introduce this ordinance to make it official. Um, I wanted to talk about it one last time to see if anybody had any questions and see if Mr. Gauzunas had any more revisions needed to it or Mr. de Blasio, and then hopefully we can introduce it at the next meeting. 
Mr. de Blasi, did you have any comments on that? Did I, did I overview that correctly? Yes. Okay. All right. So anybody have any questions on, on that ordinance? Again, this, this specifies the ownership of, of that and the details. Because, for example, what we're trying to stop is it, if someone has to do a repair, we need to be able to tell the we need to specify exactly what kind of material, how wide, how thick, all that stuff. And right now we don't have that. So people, in essence, have the opportunity, residents, to put in whatever it is that they think is, is needed. And also, importantly, to get them on the books as a customer. Correct. That's right. Everybody okay with an introduction on that at the next yep. meeting? Yep. Okay. Uh, bulkhead, ordinance, lock rating, and flood mitigation, that ties in with... Um, the uh, stormwater master plan, we're not ready for that yet, but I know Mr. de Blasio has that on his uh, radar. Old library, we're not ready for that. That'll, that's punted until the after the summer. Referendum permitting one consumption license in the, in the liquor license. Um, I'm hearing rumors that there is some discussion going on out there in the community to uh, perhaps get the referendum going, but nothing official as of right now. So it looks like that horse is just eating its uh, straw right now. Hey, it's hay. Hey. Is it hay? It's hay. Okay. It's just it's how much I know about horses. What, are, Tony, what is the deadline for the petition to be turned in? They did it? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I'll have to look up. It's all okay. three or four. Yeah, all right. something. Well, we can have that at the next meeting. Okay. Okay. That wraps up all of our new business and old business. This is the last round of public comments. We'll start with anybody on the conference line. Anybody on the conference line have any last public comments? Hearing none, do we have any on YouTube or Facebook? Nothing. Nothing. Hearing nothing, I move we adjourn. I have a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we do, um, I, I would just like to make a comment about the um, our lifeguards, the the uh, the men and women that are doing the blue movement and cleaning the beaches. Um, they do a, a fabulous job. Um, I don't know if you saw, but a 200 pound. I believe it was a loggerhead turtle was just freed from um, uh, being wrapped up today or yesterday in Cape May. Yeah, so um, it, they do a nice job, and it, it is important to keep that pollution. It's not just a matter of stuff laying on the beach. This was a 200-pound uh, turtle that was going to die had they not uh, freed it from its wrappings. So kudos to them for doing a great job. That's all, Drew. Okay. Commissioner Gould, do you have any comments? No, nothing else. I move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Mission. Second. Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.